the Longines Global Champions Tour landed in the extraordinary bay of Port Hercule in Monaco. The sixth leg of the Formula One of international show jumping once again was hosted in the sparkling portside arena where the very best riders and horses on earth brought to life another incredible stage of the series. An absolutely stunning venue, enclosed between the elegant cafes along the marina and the luxury boats moored nearby, and overlooked by the magnificent palace of Prince Albert of Monaco. As most people know, the Formula One Grand Prix is uh, only a month before the show, and so actually where you see the showground, there's all the the pit stands and the cars, they have to unbuild uh, everything and only 10 days before we start building the show. Monaco is, is unique. It's, uh, we have a course builder who, who builds uh, uh, the right way, not to, you know, to, to make it too hard for the horses in, in, in the combinations, etc. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a first class event. Decade ago, how the sport was. If you see the, you know, the, the media involved, the television involved, prize money, uh, how all our stakeholders are looked after and approved. I think we are on the right path, and uh, we have a, a great momentum. The location is very important because the surroundings are are very special in Monaco, and like on other events as well, uh, like in Paris next week, which will be in the center of the city. I think that. Uh, it offers an amazing location and people feel it's a real experience to be a part of a sport event in the center of a town, which is very rare. The comfort and at the same time uh, the level of sport is, is a combination that I think sponsors and also uh, the public enjoy to, to come in. It's very, very hard to, to say who's going to win a Grand Prix because um, we've had surprises here in Monaco uh, and, and people maybe that we didn't expect to be on the podium and I think that it's really, it depends on the shape of the horse and the rider on that day and, and I think it's a sport where it's very difficult to give uh, predictions um, so we'll see uh, who's the best on Saturday. The creation of such an incredible circuit, like the Longines Global Champions Tour, has really changed the entire world of equestrian sports. I've seen the development, um, and I've been a part of the development, which is just amazing um, and fascinating. Um, and I just think that our sport has just taken off so, so much um, because of the invention of the Global Tour. Look at how the golf has changed look at how Formula One has changed, you know, and they're only getting better and they're getting more sophisticated and they're getting more, you know, in touch with what's going on in the world, they're using the technology, they're getting more in, in contact with the outside world, um, there's more sponsors involved, there's more interest involved from the general public and I think our sport for such a long time has been too much to focus only on the people in the sport. What Jan has invented is just amazing and I know and, and I believe that there's going to be more and more and more changes and in 10 years I don't know what there's going to be. The show in Monaco is probably the most glamour, elegant show in the world. Our partnership is doing very well. The Longines Global Champion Tour have a new stage a few, day, a few weeks ago in Shanghai in China. We had for the first time riders and horses in, in China, in Shanghai to be precise, and the quality of the show was amazing. It was a historical uh, first time, and for that we are, we are very proud to be partner of this uh, Longines Global Champion Tour. The LG City is really uh, important, you know, in the, uh, for the riders on a, on a matters point of view, and uh, also it brings so many important sponsors, so many important uh, media and it's, it's uh, all together it's, uh, we can have a, a very great show. Only two weeks after the rendezvous in Cannes, where the world's number one rider, Scott Brash, claimed an electric victory with a heart-stopping jump-off, the circuit is back to highlight sports at its maximum level. Monte Carlo's 
it's luxurious, uh, it's great fun, good atmosphere, more of a holiday destination, I think, and uh, I'm looking forward to having a relaxing day tomorrow. The jumping's not until the evening, and we've had a busy few weeks. I like everything. Uh, I must say, it's, uh, I arrived uh, not so long time ago, but uh, I enjoyed already here. Everything is relaxed. And it's always nice when you have the classes in the evening and, uh, and that you can have uh, the whole day that you can be at the pool or whatever. It's more vacation-like show, actually. Yeah, I think it's a show where, where many people are coming for, you know. I think uh, many uh, great people are here at this show. And uh, yeah, I think it's nice for the riders to be here. It's beautiful here, yeah. It's a really cool atmosphere. You know, you're right on the water with the boats and everything. It's really beautiful. So the ring's a little bit smaller, so it's a little bit of an adjustment, you know, with the horses and everything. But it's a really beautiful show. I always look forward to coming here. It's a very nice show. It's a little bit different. Uh, it's a small ring, you know. The, the area is small, but they do a, they do a very good job. Uh, and I normally have a good show here, so I'm looking forward to it. Beautiful. I mean, you couldn't ask for a more exciting place to show. Uh, you know, one of my favorite settings I've seen. The three-day event offered a very intense weekend of great sport. Ben Maher opened the proceedings, winning the first class of the event. Samuel Parot, Kent Farrington and Constant Van Peersen were the next winners, while one of the most awaited appointments in Monaco was, as usual, the Longines Pro-Am Cup a very special class which saw the stunning win of the Gucci team, composed by Edwina Tops Alexander and Charlotte Kaziragi. On Saturday evening, the big moment of the Longines Global Champions Tour Grand Prix of Monte Carlo came. This time, the challenge of building the course was the task of the Belgian artist Luc Mouzet. 46 riders were ready to fly over the fences in the first round, ready to stage their fierce battle. In the smallest arena of the whole circuit, there was no room for mistakes. Ten combinations finished clear, qualifying for the second round. The best eight riders with four penalties got their ticket too. So one, two, three, four is okay, and then more or less the course starts. We have a combination, after the combination, very short to a uh, big oxo. Three combination, narrow, short distance inside. And then I think the difficult also part in the course is the last line, to get room here on the second last fence on the sixth stride. And then the riders has to really decide what they're going to do up to the last fence. Uh, when I see the last fence as a real joker, there is uh, seven very short, or they have to come a little bit forward on on six and you jump it straight into the corner and that's for many horses of Cray a little problem. The second round proved extremely selective. Only after the fifth rider Emanuele Gaudiano was there a clear round, taking him up the ranking but not into the jump off because of the four penalties in the first round. The same was true for the French rider Kevin Stork. Cameron Handley had a near miss. He finished clear, but got one penalty for going over the time, so no qualification. I was really, really happy. My horse jumped fantastic, and um, I was just a little bit too cautious in the second round. He's a young horse. He hasn't got so much experience. He's a fantastic jumper, and some of the corners, I just took a little bit too much time, gave him a little bit too much time, but um, I'm, I'm really happy with the result anyway. The crowd exploded when, in the end, only two of the 18 riders finished clear and won a place in the jump-off. Rolf Goran Bengtsson with Kassal Ask from Sweden and Bassem Hassan Mohammed from Qatar with Victoria. The first to enter the arena was the Swedish rider who elegantly cleared the big fences of the jump-off. He was fast, but not enough. Rolf, leave it up. Well, that's going to be difficult enough to beat because two world-class turns there. I was first to go in the jump-off, and uh, I thought I rode not so fast that I could anyway maybe take his time, but uh, he has the advantage of going after me, and uh, he gave it a very good try, and uh, everything worked out perfect for him, and he's a 
really good winner for today. Then it was the turn of the Qatari rider, who capitalized on the explosive power of his horse to literally fly over the obstacles without any faults. And fast he was indeed, 77 hundredths of a second less than his competitor. The spectacular result marks a history for the Longines Global Champions Tour. He is the first Qatar rider ever to win an LGCT Grand Prix. Now Gallop. He's very near, got him, you know. He's got him. He has got him. Oh, oh well. What a man. What a turn back to the vertical. He is the first Qatari rider ever to win a Longines Global Champions Tour Grand Prix. It's mean a lot for me, I think also for uh, for my team, for Qatar, for Sheikh Joan bin Hamad, he's our sponsor and he always with us, he always support us, he always uh, everywhere with us and also for uh, Abu Abdurrahman, Mr. Hamad Al Atiyah, uh, uh, President for Qatar Equestrian Federation, he always uh, with us in the shows, so I think it means a lot for us. The ranking of the championship race has dramatically changed, but not at the top. Edwina Tops Alexander remains in first position with 146 points, but the gap between the second and the third rider has narrowed drastically. Rolf Goran Bengtsson with 126 points climbs up the ranking, followed by Bassem Hassan Mohammed with only one point separating them. The Monaco round revamps the challenge in the Longines Global Champions Tour ranking. Now the focus will be on the sensational new leg in Paris near the Eiffel Tower next week, where anything can happen. <laughs> <laughs>